I will present the medical ethics in emergency medicine. We have an ethical consideration in emergency medicine as regard the physician-patient relationship, the patient's autonomy in this situation, the end-of-life decision in this situation, and communication with the uh, relatives and uh, others, and issues regarding justice. The emergency physicians have unique characters. They have little time to gather information from the patients or consult others. They have to take decisions on the moment. Also, they are unable to communicate with the patients and see what is uh, their opinion. Uh, usually, they may be unconscious patients. Uh, also, they don't have a previous relationship to know what is uh, uh, the patient's conditions, the patient's uh, pre uh, previous medical history, their values, their wishes in life and in medical treatment. At uh, the same time, they have institutional uh, regulations and lawful regulations that is, has been to be uh, respected in the hospitals. Uh, they are expected to be a resource for the community in pre-hospital care, disaster management, cardiopulmonary station, public health, injury control, and many, many different areas. The rapid need to intervene and make a decisions with the need of care of other patients is the issue of the emergency physicians. So what is the virtues in emergency medicine? This person is motivated to act in support of his or her moral beliefs and ideals, to serve as a role model for others. It is important to identify and promote the moral virtues needed by emergency physicians. For example, the courage, their ability to take a decision Okay, and uh, there is risk to provide fast care. In certain situations like violence, like attacking of the relative, like psychological agitated patients or criminal patients or infected patients or drug abusers, all this necessitate courage. At the same time, we are providing justice and fairness to all their patients. They have to, uh, let us say, uh, shepherd resources and employ therapeutic parsimony. Uh, they have to uh, take care of their patients and guaranteeing a basic level for all at the same time. The vigilance which are specific to those uh, physicians they must be alert, prepared to meet the unpredictable and uncontrollable de demands, despite the disharmony that threaten personal wants. Another point is what we call an impartiality. That's whenever you are taking a decision for your patient, you should ask yourself a question. Would I prefer the same method or the same procedures if I am in place of my patient? Another point is trustworthiness. They must be trustworthy, so the patient will trust them. They will not be exploited for power, profit, or prestige. Uh, the next point is about resilience. They should be flexible, competent during the clinical chaos. The universal ability. Uh, this is when you ask yourself, would you be willing to use the same solution in a similar cases? If you are in a situation and you solve it by a certain manner, is it the best? Is it be used in all similar conditions? Which is the best? 
And finally, the interpersonal justifiability, which is considered whether you would be willing to defend the decision to other and to share it to the decision, that, that decision in public. Whenever you are taking a decision, you can defend your decision. And usually, whenever you are defending your decision, it should be based on scientific uh, aspect and it should be evidence-based. What about the physician-patient relationship? The privacy and confidentiality of such patient is like any other situation. It should be kept and should be respected. It should be uh, one of your uh, pillars in the relationship between you and your patient. As regards the conversation, the nature of the illness, the investigation results, and the medical records. What about truth telling and communication? Here we have a great problem. Whenever are, you are a physician, you are exposed to a communication problems. You are facing different standards of population, different culture, okay, and different degree of fragility as regard whenever you are saying to others your patient is terminal ill or your patient will die or he is already dead. Some person can withstand this, some person that cannot withstand this. Okay, uh, uh, and another point, another point, whenever there is an error, an error in uh, the procedures or an error in the decision, which can worsen the patient condition. Um, when you find a terminal patient, as I told you, when a family members, you tell them that the, there is a death of their beloved one. You have to communicate with all these kids. Compassion and empathy. The emergency department is always busy. There is a disorienting and difficult place for the patient and their family. They are uh, usually tense. The healthcare providers must be ever mindful of patients and their feelings as well as uh, their uh, medical condition. How about issues related to the patient's autonomy? In all medical condition, you have to consider the autonomy of the patient and the informed consent. The autonomy is defined as self-determination and refers to a person's ability to take a decision that will affect his medical care. Okay, this will depend upon the patient tries to make a choice, uh, his intellectual uh, process, and uh, their personal values and beliefs. And the informed consent it usually is considered the patient's upon as regards the moral and legal obligation of the physicians. What about the emergency room? Sometimes your patient is unconscious, unable to give you a consent. He, you don't know his preference in medical treatment. So if you are delaying his uh, treatment or delaying his care, this may lead to his harm or this will lead to, lead to his death. So you have to take a decision to interfere in his condition for their beneficence, for the benefits of your patients, for the best a decision for your patients. What about the patient's decision-making capacity? Uh, usually it is a concept determined by a healthcare provider. Uh, all other patients conscious uh, over 18 years supposed to have the capacity to accept the medical uh, interference or refuse the plan of therapy. Okay, how about evaluation of a patient decision? You want to take a decision from your patient, you want his approval on your decision. Okay, you should take the history of the patients and uh, take care about the behavior. 
is he able to receive, understand the information, and take a decision depending on this or not. You should take a physical examination, mainly neurological, and see his mental status. Is he under influence of intoxication? If he is unconscious? Uh, if he is uh, unable to take a decision? You can ask for the assistance of psychological uh, uh, physician. Whenever your patient is lacking the decision-making capacity and you have to take an immediate action to save his life or his limb, uh, then legally and ethically you are obligated to provide appropriate care without the need of consent. But this is not occurs all over the world. Some countries uh, doesn't follow that rule, and you should know uh, what is the country and what is the law in this point. If you have a, a lot of time, you can call a third party, either like a family member or a psychiatric consultant for assistance. How about the treatment of minors? By definition, minors means a person under the age of 18 years old. With some exceptions, they are not considered competent for their decisions. Only a parent or legal guardian should give you the consent. Even if some mature minors, like 14 18 years old or older, is mature enough to understand the risk and the benefit of the proposed treatment. But for psychiatric patients, patients with mental illness or mental retardation, they are sometimes considered incompetent, okay, but still they have the right to refuse medical procedures. Patients with autism or schizophrenia or living in Rehabilitation is home. This doesn't mean they are incapable of understanding the medical procedures. They, it shows that beneficiaries trying to do the right things to those patients is considered less important than at all. So in such condition, they should be assessed specifically for each intervention and specifically at the time when the consent has to be given. What about the end of life decision? What about the advanced direct? There is two types of advanced direct. They are living wills and health care proxy or medical power of control. What about the living wills? It expresses the wishes of the patient regarding life sustaining procedures in the event of terminal. وصية يكتبها الشخص قبل وهو على قيد الحياة بيعبر فيها ان هو عايز يتعمل له ايه اذا كان هو في المرحلة النهائية من الحياة قبل الموت Another one is called the health care proxy The health care proxy is a person chosen specifically by the patient to take a decision for him whenever they are unable to take a decision for themselves لما يبقى المريض يختار حد وصي قريب ياخد له القرار لو هو دخل في مرحلة صحية متأخرة وكان غير قادر ان هو ياخد القرار بنفسه It is based on two parameters The patient's directly expressed health care wishes or what the patient will want if he have the capacity We have what we call do not resuscitate or do not attempt resuscitation. It is written order from the healthcare provider limiting the resuscitation. Usually it is applied by the patient whenever he is pulseless or need a cardiopulmonary resuscitation or advanced life support. Usually there is a form written in official uh, for, uh, manner and it is signed by the patients and relatives or the witnesses. It must be clear regarding those interventions that are to be implemented and those that are 
تو بي ويز هيلث نعمل ايه وما نعملش ايه ايه اللي ايه اللي هو المريض بي بي بيفضل We are confronted usually with cases of futility. What do we mean by futility? Futility means that you are providing therapy that shouldn't be performed because available data have shown that it will not be improving the medical condition. This means you are providing procedures or you are providing uh, performance to the patients without Beneficence to that patient or without beneficent to that condition. It is considered usually ethically controversial for several reasons. What about the duties and responsibility of emergency physicians? The welfare of the patients are the primary responsibility. They respond expertly and rapidly uh, without partiality to the need of emergency medical care. They respect the right and strive to protect the best interest of the patient. They are acting for the beneficence of the patients, particularly the most vulnerable and those unable to make the decision. They are communicate truthfully with the patients and secure their informed consent of treatment unless it is an emergency or urgency conditions that necessitate the interference of the physicians to the life-saving process of the patients. They should respect the patient's privacy and disclose confidential information only with consent of the patients or when required by an by an overriding duty such as the duty to protect others to or to obey the law. They deal fairly and honestly with their colleagues, taking an appropriate action to protect the patient from healthcare providers who are impaired or incompetent or who engage in fraud or deception. They work cooperatively with other care providers and uh, are about emergency patients. They engage in continuing study to maintain the knowledge and skills necessary to provide high quality care for emergency patients. They act as responsible stewards of the health care resources entrusted to them. They support the societal efforts to improve the public health and safety, reduce the effect of injury, illness, secure access to emergency and other basics uh, and other basic health care of horrible. What about the moral issues in disaster medicine, what we call a triage? Triage is based on the principle of providing the greatest benefit to the greatest number of the patient and assessment of case severity for each case. أو عملية تصنيف للعيانين نقدر نخدم أكبر عدد ممكن إزاي ونصنفهم حسب صعوبة الحالة أو حسب شدة الحالة. In emergency department, triage medical care might lead to adverse consequences like delay in providing care, compromise in privacy and confidentiality. The four principles of biomedical ethics, respect for autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence and justice provide the starting point and help us to identify the ethical challenges of emergency department triage.